presence of a smaller people in cataract surgery is always a challenge. Let us see how to manage them in phacosuction. A sclerocorneal tunnel is made. Entry into the anterior chamber is through a 3 mm keratome. Tripan blue is aspirated. Visco is injected into the anterior chamber to make it deep. Cystitome gets to the anterior chamber through an entry in the floor of the tunnel. This keeps the chamber deep throughout the procedure. There is no loss of viscoelastic from the tunnel during the rexis and runoff of rexis because of shadowing of chamber would not occur. The internal opening of the tunnel is enlarged. Cataract nucleus epinucleus is rotated within the capsular bag. In this case, hydrodissection is not done as we don't see the posterior capsule. The nucleus is cartwheeled into the anterior chamber by bimanual technique through the smaller pupil. It's a hard, large nucleus. It's broken into two pieces with a 26 gauge cannula which is continuously injecting HPMC in front of the nucleus separating it from the endothelial. Endothelial protection is of paramount importance in this step. Heminucleus is removed. You can see that there is no stretch on the tunnel which eventually ends up in creating a very small SIA of less than 0.4 diopters. Cortex is aspirated fully. It's extremely important to ensure that every bit of cortex is aspirated. It does not come out like an immature cataract. You need to go to every clock hour in the phonics and look for chunks of cortex all around 360 degrees. IO is injected without folding into the capsular bag. Non-folding of IOL is of great help because it does not create the vertical striations that you normally see when you are injecting it. AC is formed, there is no need to hydrate the tunnel and uh, the congenital denounce flap is reposited and using the fibrin glue. Another case, the anterior capsule is stained with tripan blue, tunnel floor entry. In a mature cataract, it's always ideal to do a rexis as large as possible. Here you see, to begin with, the pupil was extremely small, but with the wick in the, as you see, in the lower, uh, in the upper, upper temple, upper left corner of the field. You see a small cotton wick which is soaked with tropicamide plus eye drops and that within a couple of minutes time, it's very effective and within a couple of minutes time you see the people dilating to tolerable levels. Adrenaline when used intracamerally will damage the endothelium so I try my best not to use it in any case of the small people situations. The two hemi nuclear removed, you aspirate the cortex and you put the lens. Another case with white cataract which is swollen, stain, filled with viscoelastic, then tunnel floor entry with cystitone. Here, though there is no loss of anterior chamber, it's tough to complete the rexis in one go. There is some visco loss and AC is shallowing. A small rexis could be achieved. Enlarge the internal opening of the tunnel. There is a small 
flap that was created you identify and remove the uh, complete the flap by removing it so that it doesn't tear to the periphery rotating the nucleus and aspirating the loose cortex from all 360 degrees will really help you to deepen the chamber now it is time to enlarge the rexis make a small leg as there are no side ports the sub incisional capsule can be enlarged by a cystotome make an entry not exactly in the capsular margin but quarter millimeter inside and uh, you know you can create a dog ear like flap which can be extended using a cystotome so i have uh, adequate sized uh, capsular opening rotate the nucleus Ensure that the complete nucleus is in the antechamber. Bisect the nucleus. Here, the cystotome is used to bisect the nucleus. Cystotome is mounted on a visco syringe, 2 ml, and that is continuously being injected. And as I am injecting, it's a very hard nucleus. I'm trying to score the nucleus. It needs so many attempts to cut the nucleus into two halves, then remove one half. Always see that the two hemi nuclear pieces are totally separated before you take out the first one, otherwise, the second one will start moving, damaging the epithelium. Another case where there is a posterior subcapsular cataract and moderately dilated pupil, not a very Great pupil. I do hydrodissection in every case of uh, posterior subcapsular cataract. It really helps me in saving the posterior capsule as against the usual uh, teaching. The first thing I do in such a case mandatorily is to rotate the nucleus, epinucleus mass. Again, uh, removed in two pieces I spread the uh, cortex carefully and put the lens in the capsular bag as it's a low pressure technique I've never had uh, you know a tear in the inadvertent tear in the posterior capsule which usually occurs because the capsule is weaker there is a differential pressure on the central capsule as that's the first one which loses the uh, the mass and then uh, there is an excessive pressure in the posterior capsule by positive pressure surgery so this totally eliminates positive pressure in the anterior chamber and you will have a very comfortable surgery on the posterior capsular cataracts including the plaques on the posterior capsule this is a small uh, pupil you can do a capsule ca capsulotomy larger than the capsule by going underneath that the capsulotomy is being done under viscoelastic with a deep chamber rotate the nucleus cartwheel it to the anterior chamber by lifting one edge in this case because of severe IFIS the iris itself is moving so this step I normally avoid bisecting the nucleus when half of the nucleus is in the posterior chamber is not recommended because I've had a uh, few uh, posterior capsular tears in such a maneuver. Always try to bring it, but here it was impossible, so I had to carefully do the bisection uh, when the, the nucleus is still in the posterior chamber and put the lens in the capsular bag. Complete cortical aspiration is essential in every case of small people. Thank you.